This is George from High Tech Legion. We're seeing a greater uh, trend towards efficiency in today's CPUs and GPUs, but we're also seeing more of a propensity towards heat among these. Uh, especially in the CPUs, AMD's FX series obviously runs uh, quite a bit warmer than its predecessor, especially when overclocked, as does Intel's Ivy Bridge, and especially the Haswell. Uh, naturally, we're seeing solutions coming out to try and combat this heat, especially in overclocked situations. Today, we're going to take a look at the newest, uh, newest piece from Gelid Solutions, which is their Black Edition Dual Tower CPU Cooler with seven heat pipes, a slim 120mm fan, as well as a silent 120mm fan. Starting off, let's take a quick look at the box, which has some of the key features and specs. Obviously, nice picture of the Black Edition itself on the front of the box. Nice packaging all around from Gelid. Uh, over to the side, seven power heat pipes, as we said. They're also in a very unique configuration, which we'll get into. Um, OC, or GC Extreme Thermal Compound. For those not familiar, Gelid Solutions GC Extreme is one of the most respected thermal compounds on the market, and you do get a small tube included here. Uh, Third fan ready, does come with fan clips for a third fan, obviously it's an asymmetrical piece so you can add a third fan, silent operation, PWM control on the fans, five year warranty. Going over to the side, get some actual specifications. First off, the uh, Black Edition is compatible with all of today's sockets, AM2, AM3, uh, FM sockets on AMD as well as 1150, 1155, 56, 1366, and 2011 on Intel, also backwards compatible to 775. So taking a look at the airflow, um, you get up to 89.1 on the slim fan and 98.6 max on the silent fan. Uh, both these very, very quiet, 25.4 and 0.5 respectively DB on the two fans at max load, which is 1500 on the silent fan, 1600 on the slim fan. Uh, the unit itself weighs in at 990 grams with the fans attached, so it's a substantial unit, but not uh, really incredibly heavy. Uh, we regularly see dual tower coolers over a thousand grams. This comes in just shy of that. So, stands 160 millimeters tall, so you're going to fit this in most mid tower cases without a problem. Moving from the box, let's take a look at the unit itself. The Gelid Black Edition, obviously, very good looking cooler all around. Dual towers, slim fan up front, as you can see, with the silent fan in the center. Uh, two fin arrays with heat pipes running through. Taking a look up top, um, you've got very nice cover with the Gelid logo up top, with tops on all the heat sinks. And as you can see, the heat sinks are not in a straight line. They're arranged in a U shape, and as you can see also, the fins themselves are staggered. This provides better airflow, a little bit better heat dissipation as well, especially the array of the heat sinks themselves. The, fin, the uh, fans, I should say, are held on by clips. And we'll just pop them off and get a look at the tower itself. Clips are all black, as you can see, part of the Black Edition scheme. And center fan obviously slides in the middle in between the two towers and pop it right out and get a look here. So taking a look, as you can see, nice copper contact plate, nice milled finish, not polished but milled, so you do get some milling marks. Now the uh, specs on the Black Edition itself say that it's got seven six millimeter heat pipes. That is obviously not the case looking at it. It is four six millimeter heat pipes and three eight millimeter heat pipes, which are in a staggered position. As you can see, two of the six millimeter pipes actually sit on top of the three eight millimeter pipes. We've seen this arrangement before from Sigma Tech, uh, as well as a couple of other manufacturers. It works very, very well on small CPUs with concentrated heat. Um, it, as I say, uh, especially Ivy Bridge has well. Uh, it does work well on the AMDs, but it really stands out on the smaller a or, um, Intel chips. Very nice looking heat uh, 
pipes as you see. Great looking block. Mounting bracket already attached to the block by just a single small screw down in there. So your tie down is already there. Very, very nice looking piece from Gelid. Um, all around, as you can see also on the sides, you get the sealing of the sides, just bend down on the fins. That actually helps to keep the air contained within and flowing through rather than flowing outside. So you get a greater concentration of air flowing through. Going into the accessory kit, first we find the installation manual, well laid out, quite a few languages, good pictures on the side, not the largest pictures you're ever gonna see, but you know what? They work very well, they're very well illustrated. Moving on, multi-use backplate for Intel and AMD, obviously flip it around, Intel brackets, AMD brackets, Y cable for your fans, small tube GC compound, isolating washers, and your nuts, bolts, and spring clips for the hold down. The installation on the Gelid Black Edition is actually pretty simple. Um, first we're going to start with the back plate, as you can see here. It's going to go on the back, and as you can see, you've got different configurations for each of different sockets. Uh, three Intel selectors right here, and just going to take your bolt, put it through the appropriate and it'll come through the motherboard. So let's take a look from the other side as we line it up and back. And as you can see, bolt will come right through. And onto there, it will then be putting a non-conductive washer over. down to the motherboard, and standoff. Obviously, this will be repeated for all four corners. You just want to hand tighten it, don't over tighten, and you also want to make sure that the bolt is locked in the back plate. As you can see, we've got the four standoffs in place. Next, our Intel brackets will go on. As you can see, once again, three ridges for the different three Intel sockets. Just line it up with the proper socket, put it into place, and four nuts will go right on top of that, or I should say two nuts on the bottom, two nuts on the top, so a total of four. Very important, you want the ridge side up and you want the curvature away from the socket. And as you see, these are threaded, so you can give them a final snug down with a screwdriver. And mount points are all in place and we're ready to put the cooler in. As you can see, I've gone ahead and applied the thermal interface material. Now we'll put the cooler into place. and two spring clips will be screwed into the two mount points that you see between the two towers. One of the things to be mindful of during the installation of the tower, as you can see we've put it in, but as you can see this, uh, the crossbar is not evenly spaced between the two towers. It sits closer to this tower. You want that towards the front. You want the tower sitting further back than further forward. This is going to open up some space between uh, the front of the tower and the uh, RAM slots. So you're going to have a little bit more room for a uh, taller height RAM or just clearance of the RAM slots in general. So installed in the case, as you see we put the fans in, um, the Jelly Black Edition is a good looking cooler. 
as you can see, dual tower with the slim fan in front. Now it does overhang the first ram slot a tiny bit, not to the halfway point of the first ram slot. You may or may not be able to get taller ram into the first slot. You definitely can in the other three without a problem. Um, now, if that's not enough, of course, you can take the slim fan and bring it to the back, which is going to open up all four ram slots. Uh, you will get slightly um, less cooling out of the black edition itself, but you will open up all four RAM slots if you are going to be putting tall RAM in all four. Uh, the installation itself, not incredibly difficult. However, uh, the quality of the components themselves um, were a little bit lightweight, especially for a cooler in this price range. Uh, also, the fan clips were incredibly difficult to work with, trying to get them on once the cooler was installed. But other than that, uh, simple as far as the basic install and a good looking result. Of course, now we need to see how it cools. So after having the Jell-O Black Edition on the bench, we definitely have a mixed bag of results here. Uh, something to bear in mind, this is a $75 cooler. This is not a $50 cooler. So we're going to assess it as such. Um, first off, obviously, very good looking cooler inside of the case. Install itself, not too difficult. Um, did have some problems with the fan clips, uh, the design on them. The cooler itself and the way the fan clips are used is a little funky, uh, a little difficult to get them on. Uh, the quality of the insulation kit, however, is another matter. In a $75 cooler, I definitely would have liked to have seen nicer components used for the installation kit itself. Moving on to the performance. Performance was solid. Um, no question about that, especially at stock speeds. Uh, when you started throwing the voltage at it, it started underperforming a bit compared to the other coolers in this price class. It's really not going to keep up uh, as an enthusiast overclocking type of cooler. However, it was the quietest of the coolers in the test as well. So there is a trade-off of silence uh, and cooling capabilities. Now, how much of a trade-off uh, really? The Fantex... Um, 14PE, for example, is not a loud cooler by any stretch of the imagination, not much louder than this, and performed uh, considerably better, especially with an overclock on it. So, you know, there is a bit of an issue there, uh, but like I say, solid cooler and very quiet. If you're not going to be overclocking, it's a fantastic choice of a cooler. It looks great, it's very quiet, and it's going to give you a great performance. If you're moving into the enthusiast, you want a high overclock, it's probably not the right choice of a cooler. So all in all, I'm going to give it a silver award. Very, very solid performance, um, nice looking, but you do have a couple of problems. Like I say, the install kit, I didn't feel the quality on it was really as high as it should have been in the cooler in this price class. And the one other thing that really bothers me is the cooler itself. They're using the slim fan up front and it just doesn't quite sit back far enough to clear up that first RAM slot. Other than that, like I say, very solid cooler, great choice if you're not going to be doing any extreme overclocking, quiet, good looking, Jell-O Black Edition.